And there's something about our past, the people, you know, you find them wandering around in these towns, and, and I often wonder, what are they looking for? You know, what is it that grabs them? I'm not sure I have the answer, mm -hmm. but it, there's something quite mysterious about that. Yes. You know, our civilization is so mechanized, and everything turns over, buildings come yes. down, go up. Yes. And, there's at least a fragment of our I know, I know, history for instance, there. There's no, there's no tradition in New York as far as buildings are concerned. Wherever there, there's anything of value, if they can put up a 50-story uh, office building, they tear it all down, and it's not yeah, important. That's right. Yeah. Uh, what? W why don't these towns totally disappear? It seemed to me that everyone, everyone who visits would like a memento, a board. Well, a, a you're right. And, and they do, board by board, they disappear. They disappear. They in some cases, they, some of the towns are privately owned or parts of them, or there's some, just some guy with a gun, and it just stands there, and people kind of shy away. And uh -huh. for one reason, or, or some of them have been so isolated and so hard to get to, particularly in the tough winters and all, yes. that, that yes. people haven't gotten there, you know. What is your philosophy of photography? What, what, uh, what is your goal? What, uh, has your experience given you? It's given me a lot. It's, um, my, it's wonderful to be involved in, in beauty and in creating or being part of the yes. creation of yes. something beautiful. Yes. yes. And it's about seeing and perception. And yes. you know, everyone will see something differently. So, what is that different? that it has to do with your own inner part. Your own. So yes. there's an interaction between that fleeting moment that the camera captures yes. and something that lasts. And we all have different visions. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You and I, you're a photographer. We could take pictures right here and we'd have... We'd totally same, different. Totally different. It's true. Mm. Now, this is just for the camera buffs. I have always maintained that uh, camera lenses have their own vision. Yes, yes. You Wide see? angle. Yes, yeah. yeah. Why don't you talk about that? And, and how do you decide which you want to use? This, uh, for I, instance, uh, w w this one that we saw earlier. That's, that's with a, a fairly wide, that's a wide angle lens. Mm -hmm. And then you weren't very far from the building. That's right, and it, yeah. it helps to give you that feeling of uh -huh. expanse and uh -huh. depth. Uh -huh. Was it necessary to use that with, <laughs> this is an abstract, it's not a river, it's not <laughs> water. This is a... Now that's the other, that's a, a mild telephoto lens, yes. which tends to collapse the perspective. Did you say mild? It yeah, it's a, a hundred millimeter yeah. lens, I think. Yeah, for 35 for millimeter 35. camera, yes yeah. it is. It's, so it's it just so beautiful. Pulls you in closer. What was your vision? Did you see this? Uh, you know, I'm asking you the kinds of questions that a professional would not ask, but people want to know, I sure. think. Did you see this before the print was made? The finished print? Did yes. I see all the colors? Did you see this? when you took it before you I'd took like it. to say yes but I don't think I really yeah. did. I mean yeah. I saw I saw the general you, form right and the stream was flowing mm -hmm. very fast so I took yeah. several exposures yes. um, but as the camera the specific, takes over doesn't it yeah, yeah that's true and then the printing you see the printing you can adjust the, the deeper indeed, colors and so forth indeed forth. I know that so <laughs> now um, you you spent some years in New York Yes, right. From 61 to 64. Uh -huh. That was as I was working for the publisher. Right. And, and then we're, we're, what happened? Then I what, went to what? Beirut for two years. Those were the nice days in Beirut. <laughs> that was the time to be yes, there. Yes, yes. You, you had the happy times yeah. of Beirut. And, and uh, what sort of... And I got to know the foreign uh, correspondents there. I went mm -hmm. on to Egypt and to places like Yemen with the New York yeah. Times guy. Yeah. And yeah off to the Kurds that I mentioned and mm -hmm. off to the Saudi Arabian desert for a British magazine to do a mm -hmm. story on the old um, Lawrence of Arabia had blown up all those bridges and, uh, and, and the trains are still sitting there in the desert. Yeah. You know. Let's take a break and we'll come back sure. in just a moment and we'll start with Lawrence of Arabia. Fine. All right. We're back with Bill Carter, artist, photographer, author, musician. That, that, 
<laughs> that gets me. You, you, you play clarinet. Right. And I've been, I've been giving Turk Murphy so much credit, but here you have the Magnolia Jazz Band, and you are uh, immediately shown, big as life. <laughs> what, what is this all about? Why, what, what, what are you doing? Well, you know, I've been doing this about 30 years, believe it or not, I've, and I play about once a week with the jazz band, particularly the Magnolia Band. I went on a European tour for several weeks with another band. What is a Magnolia Band? Is that the we title the, of it? Yeah, we play, it's guys in California here, but we play the old New Orleans stuff. All of us know the Preservation Hall guys from mm -hmm. New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I've photographed them a lot for album covers and so yes. forth. Yes. And uh, it's again, it's this wonderful uh, tradition we have of, of, uh, of something, a, a real American art form. And I, it's just, I love it, I, you know playing some bar once a, once a week or Well, how do you, uh, now you're, you're, are you playing, uh, uh, you said you were pa playing this week. Where? This week in Costa Mesa at a, a, a guy uh, flew us all down from Northern California to, for a job. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's wonderful. They have a little jazz club there, I think. And you're is. paid for it. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. And, and do you have an agent? No, the guy that plays the bass just is a manager of the band, and oh, he does all uh, that. We got plenty of work, more than most of us can handle. You know? Isn't that incredible? And there are festivals all over the country, and I we see, go off I and play see. in these festivals for a weekend or whatever. Yeah, yeah. we have now, about five well, albums. Well, uh, tell what are these? Are these businessmen? Are they just musicians? You're more than you're, 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 you play the clarinet, but you do other things. Yeah. What about your, the rest of the band? Okay, um, the trombone player imports fertilizer. The trumpet player is uh, teaches junior high school. The uh, banjo. banjo player is a physicist, and, and the, the bass, fiddle? bass player he's a full time professional musician. And the drummer, who is my stepson, is. Uh, a musician also. He's in India oh at the my moment. God. And is he is he planning to be a professional? Is oh yeah, he is. He and he already is. But he's also st studying uh, spiritual studies in mm -hmm. India and studying mm -hmm. Indian drumming at the same time. I see. I see. Fascinating. What an interesting, endlessly interesting life <laughs> you have. Do you do you get to play? Uh, outside of the country when you're when you're visiting when you go to London say yeah uh, I lived in London for three years yes. and uh, I got to know some of the music there's some very good jazz musicians in uh -huh. England uh -huh. have been for a long time that was that and, and it's always just like a little passport you know it's an international yes, language yes, yes. Yeah. In Beirut, we had a guy from the Dutch embassy and a, and a, and a Canadian journalist and a couple other guys. We had a little group. We, we put on a... Is there a, is there a brotherhood, a kind of a list for musicians that you... I know there is among uh, the classical players. If you, wanna, if you play the violin and you want to join a quartet in, in Holland or Alaska or whatever, they're there. Yeah, I don't know how it, it's not written down. You know, yeah. it's one of those invisible yeah. lists. Yeah, yeah, you you know. I don't know how you know. But you just <laughs> like photography. You know those things That's too. That's great. <laughs> I want you know. I'm going to bring you back to. Uh, is this tombstone? I don't know where this is. That's, this this is an town, exciting black and white. Yeah, that's a town out in the middle of uh, Utah. Uh huh. It was one of the first industrial mining towns in America, and they had a big accident there, and a whole lot of men were killed in the early part of the century. It's a town called Schofield. Uh -huh. Utah. Uh -huh. And it's it's a real ghost town yeah, now. Yeah. And I was there in the winter, obviously, and the, I took one step out on the snow. It's kind of spooky, I have yeah. to tell you, in some of these joints. Yeah, and then I heard the sound kind of spreading out over oh the whole Lord. snow. Yes. I finally realized it was the ice underneath cracking out in every direction. But so, but that's. Uh, Did you go back? Did you fly? <laughs> <laughs> You know, well, uh, you, you you said something earlier about tombstones, and and I want to remind you of it. What? And I'm not sure that I uh, you told me, but uh, what is it you want on your tombstone? Oh, on my tombstone. Well, I had a great teacher of meditation, uh -huh. Swami Muktananda, and he and I, I did a lot of photography of him and of people in around India. Him, in India. Yes. And uh, we called him Baba, and he said to an Indian photographer, he was talking about me and my photography, and mm -hmm. the Indian photographer said, well, yeah, but look at how all that equipment he's got, and Baba turned to him and said, he doesn't take pictures with his camera, he takes pictures with his heart. 
That's marvelous. So that I thought, really is beautiful. If you want to put that on my tombstone, <laughs> you can do that. That's fine. <laughs> I'd like to show. Is this one of the group? The the uh, this was this was in, in India. Right, and that's yeah. the. That's the man in, on the right in the center that I was uh -huh. speaking about, and his, his two successors. We'll find him, in, in, in we'll, we'll stress that in, in the reprodu reproduction of it. Right. And that was but, a, a very Hindu ceremony that was going well, on. What sort of life did you live in India? Well, it was uh, a monastic sort of existence, uh -huh. really. And, uh, but also, again, as a photographer, I tend to get into these positions of sometimes like the court photographer yes and there were there were certain dignitaries around and I was always on hand for that or I'd go off to Kashmir or this place or the other place for so that's you know it's like that with a photographer you're always part of the you know you're scene. dropping names that I I think is just incredible you go off to Kashmir <laughs> 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 now, where was this beautiful thing? That's then? also in India, and that's in the India. Ganges River in uh -huh. Benares, which is a great holy city of it's India. It's exciting. Those are exciting. guys unloading cement from, uh, or sand from, uh, from boats. From barges. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would imagine that in India there would be no need for chain, bringing sand from anywhere to anywhere. But it's so, isn't yeah. it? Building a little building yeah. there. Yeah, hey, I I want to talk more about your this this word that you the phrase you use court photographer. You've been involved in many things. Was yeah. this with women's women's wear daily? Was this how you came to it? Uh, again, in living in London, I did a lot of assignments for a, this a trade newspaper in New York, Women's mm -hmm. Wear Daily, mm -hmm. and they were doing at that time a lot of interviews with people like Deborah Carr and David Niven and so forth, and also people that are in, were in the clothing business, Carnaby Street and all, which was very prominent. Yes. Yes. So inevitably you get to, you know, I did a story on Katharine Hepburn and so forth. It was fast. But then more recently I've been asked to do uh, photographs every summer at the Bohemian Club in, in Northern California and a lot of famous people are around there. Is that similar to the Bohemians that is in New York? Is it a musical group? No, no, no. Then it's something else. No, it's it's a men's club and uh, yes, yes. And uh, but only, there, there are only a lot of musicians, musicians many musicians yeah. and artists, such yes. as myself, and so yeah. forth. Then there are a lot of yeah. businessmen and lawyers and teachers and and Tell politicians. Tell about David Niven. Oh, <laughs> we were talking about how yes. actors um, they get so identified with their masks and they're so skillful at it yeah. that they sometimes lose track or they never knew really who was. The personality behind the yes. mask, and um, I was photographing him with a correspondent. Well, the correspondent was talking to him, and he's so—he was such a professional, so in command of how he looked at every minute on camera mm -hmm. that he really wanted to be in control of yes. it. Yes. And of course, my way is to get through the mask to try to get the human being behind it. <laughs> and he got more and more upset yeah. at this whole process because <laughs> I was kind of trying to get behind that mask. You see, Bill, let's continue this next week. Absolutely. We have so much more to talk about. Come back and, and join Bill Carter and me next week. <laughs>